it's your brother Alan Riyadineko. Welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information, inspiration in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Alan Riyadineko Center for Edge Inspiration, the place. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're sharing some truth this morning on what defiles the church assembly, the local assembly, and that's coming from 4 Corinthians 3, 16 to the end of it. A word of prayer, and right after that, we jump into it together. Our Father and our God, we bless you for yet another Sunday. We rejoice at it, O God, particularly this one. Many places all over Nigeria, they are just celebrating the independence anniversary in the churches. We ask again that you cause our people to remember how to pray for this nation and how to do in the affairs of this nation, you know, that we do as individuals in the name of Jesus. As we go on to share this morning, oh God, we pray that by your grace, Lord God, you will endow us from above, that we'll do a good job of that which we are doing this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So, 1 Corinthians 3 forms from 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Kephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God. Amen. Now it begins, let no one deceive himself. If anybody among you seems to be wise, sorry, it begins in 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Now, the temple of God that is referring to here is the church. Is the church assembly. Is each church assembly as the temple of God, not as the individual bodies now. That's what it's referring to here. You as a church, you are the temple of God. That's what it's reminding us of. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you, dwells in the church. Hallelujah. These things give us an idea of the power of the, of the local church or the local assembly. Now, if anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which, whose temple you are. As a church, make sure that you don't do anything that will defile the church. That's why we, we are looking at what can defile the church. We are going to come back to that in a couple of minutes. But this is what he's saying now. He's referring to the local church, not individual bodies. The local church can be defiled. And uh, that, that, that says a lot, really. <clears throat> uh, we should be careful about that. Good. It says, let no one deceive himself. If anybody among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that may be wise. Now, this is the typical reverse order thing of our kingdom that we say all the time. It is when you um, devalue that your own wisdom. And when you bring it to zero, you nullify it, bring it to zero, bring it to naught. That is when the grace of God will release proper wisdom. Hallelujah. To you from above. That is the way it is in our kingdom. And we have said that many, many times here. We probably are going to see a little bit of it as we go on again. But you see, it says, let no one deceive himself. How, how, how are they connected? If anybody thinks he has enough wisdom for the affairs of this world, that person deceives himself. Hmm. That's it. That person deceives himself and there is no truth in him. Amen. Because you see... That's why it says, let him become a fool. Let him bring it to zero. Let him bring it to naught. So that the grace of God may reveal, may release unto him true wisdom. The one that is from above. Inside information, privileged information, intel from God. Hallelujah. And then you can now have the truths of life. And on account of the truths of life, you can do very well in this life. If you think that you wouldn't need what I've just described, you deceive yourself. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He now says, because, the basis of his assertion in verse 18, it says, because the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. 
Because it is written, it catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, written again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. It was quoting from the Old Testament, okay? Two different scriptures. He has combined them together now. It catches the wise in their own craftiness. And the fu- th- thoughts of the wise, the wise in this world, is futile. It's God who said so. And that's why he says that if you really think that you are wise in this world, in this age, you deceive yourself. If you don't want to count upon the wisdom of God, particularly a child of God, who knows that the way God views the wisdom of this world is futile. It's nothing as far as God is concerned. But when you get the knowledge of these great truths of life from God, they help you to do well in the affairs of life. Amen. Um, it says, therefore, do not let anyone boast in men. Now he's back to what we are started. Remember, it says that if anyone defies the temple of God, amen, so this boasting in men, which was what he started with right from the beginning. Some of them, I'm of Paul, I'm of Kephas, I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Christ and all that. Don't boast in men. When, 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 what do we mean by in men? In men's abilities and men's giftings and men's, uh, mm, yeah, and, 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 and um, those performances you, you observe in men over which people got so impassioned enough to to make them be disagreeing one with another to say to be, become sectarian i'm for this person i'm you know for this person ah this guy is my you know and all that that kind of a thing that is not godly and it defies the church that's where we are going it defies the church in other words if we so allow ourselves as a church assembly to fail to see how that these people they are working um to complement one another that's why it says it, um, the, the person who plants and the ones who waters, they are one. It's God who has brought them together. They are complementing one another. None of them is complete in himself. Hallelujah. But they are complementing one another. Inside of us dividing ourselves and dividing these people, thereby defiling the church. Now, uh, this is a big thing. Now, some of us... We have a tendency to cause division, to be divisive in the church, you know, and all that. We don't realize that they are defiling the church. And when you are defiling the church, it makes it more difficult for the Spirit of God to move in the midst of the church. Kenneth Hagin uh, used to say, he says, pastors, for, pastored for 12 years. That's of all the churches where he pastors, one stood out. Then great, great manifestations of the power of the Spirit happened in that church. And the reason it was like that was that the church was such a united church. They were so much one. They, were, they believed so much in one another. They cared for one another. They did things as one. They were so quick to forgive and to forget. He said, all this, said so. The Spirit of God was able to really operate in the midst of them the way it ought to operate. And then we are praying for the manifestations of the people. We are asking for rain in the time of the latter rain. But some of these things are defiling the church, not allowing the Spirit of God to operate the way he would have loved to operate. That's what we are learning today. And I pray that God will help, help some of us to repent and to do things correctly in the name of Jesus. Yes, because all things are yours. Whether Paul, Apollos, Kephas, the word of the, the world or the life or death, things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ and Christ is God. In other words, some of these ministers over whom we, even we are getting so impassioned, they actually are yours. We own them. That's what the Bible says. We actually own them. They are gifts from God unto us. Hallelujah. They are gifts from God unto us. Therefore, have that understanding. Appreciate them as gifts from God unto us. No matter what area one specializes or one is good at or one is best at, all of them are working together for the same purpose. They've been given to us by the same God. Hallelujah. They are our gifts. We own them. And it's important for us to have that understanding. When we have that understanding, we appreciate them more. We appreciate God more. We cooperate with one another better and the spirit of god is able to do what he wishes to do thank you so very much for being um, here with us today on a sunday as it is as you go to church we are trusting god that you will go there to make an impact in the mighty name of jesus yes truly you are going to receive something but you know something that jesus says it is more blessed to give than to receive so as you go have in your heart you are going to give to somebody okay jesus says give unto them such as things are from within yeah from within gift to somebody in the name of jesus christ and it's going to be better for everybody thank you very very much i wish you a fantastic week ahead in the mighty name of jesus christ god bless you see you tomorrow